Good Monday morning, Utah. It is the summer 7th. Snow and ice. Lick Street. Two to four feet of snow in this. December 7th, 2009. I was viewing a, a bank robbery case, and the sergeant asked me to reach out to patrol. They were out on a missing family out on the west side of town. Jennifer gave permission to the police to break a window and go into the house. Most officers just kind of shimmied in. He was like, wait, what is up with the fans? There are two box fans pointed at the carpet in the living room, and we were all confused. The officers cleared the entire residence and found nobody inside the home. And the PAL vehicle, which was a blue minivan, it wasn't parked in the garage. The first thing I saw was Susan's purse was on a table. And I started pulling out things. You know, I, I found her keys, her wallet, and had her driver's license and her credit card. You would expect that if she had left on her own, was intending to go someplace, she would have taken those items. The kitchen, the master bedroom was, was fairly clean. I mean, the bed wasn't made. The uh, bedroom for the children, the blankets were missing. But yeah, the house was pretty orderly. There was no sign of a disturbance, physical altercation inside of the residence. Is this yeah. On the morning of December 7th, I was sitting in my family room, homeschooling my three kids. And the phone rang. The voice on the other end said, Josh, Susan, and the boys are missing, and nobody has seen them since yesterday. It's just the most horrible, sickening feeling. I just thought, what has happened? Susan's friends were afraid that they'd gone out on a jaunt because Josh liked to drive and take photographs and maybe had slipped off a cliff or they'd gotten stuck in the snow. I made a few phone calls asking other people in the congregation if anyone had seen Susan. Giovanna goes, I actually had dinner with them last night. Susan asked Giovanna to come over to the house and help her with her knitting and crocheting. While she was there, Josh, who never did anything domestic at all, offered to make people dinner. He was crocheting on a blanket. I was working on the yarn. Josh and the boys were in the kitchen cooking. He called his father, Steve, to ask for a recipe for pancakes. Everything he did was a little bit different routine than anybody else would have. He made them one by one. He took a plate into Giovanna. He took a, a plate with different pancakes made, obviously, into Susan. He and the boys ate at the table, and he brought our, our plates in to us in the, in the living room. I think that was probably very unusual. I never, ever witnessed them ever eating in the living room. Shortly after that, Susan began to not feel well. Susan laid down, and Josh sort of suggested to Giovanna that it was time for her to leave. He was going to take the boys sledding, and he and the boys actually drove out before I had finished putting on my seatbelt. That was the last time I saw anybody, or around five. My brother finally called right away, asked about the kids, asked about Susan, and he was like, yeah, the kids are here. No, Susan's not with me. And I was like, well, where is she? <laughs> you know, and he was like, I don't know. I have no idea. Like, she went to work. Josh drives all the way south to a place called Point of the Mountain, and he places a phone call to Susan's phone. Hello, Susan. We are on our way back, and um, I can't believe that somehow my brain missed the day. I thought today was Sunday. That was really, really stupid. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. We sat there and waited. It was a long time. It was an hour, maybe more. Josh finally showed up at the house. Josh had taken the children on a middle-of-the-night camping trip. It was freezing cold. None of this makes any sense, except to him, he does things spontaneously without any plan. And he took the kids. He said that he left Susan in the house. She was sleeping. We really wanted to talk with Josh, and we wanted to record it. We had Josh follow us to the, the substation. He was adamant about taking the boys with him. When's the last time you've seen her? 
probably about midnight of last night. We're uh, we're finishing up a movie. What movie did you just watch? Um, Four. Mom. Hey, go back. Josh is very evasive, and he uses the kids who are in the room to distract the way. He wasn't forthcoming with answers or information, so it was very frustrating. Well, where did you drive to? Well, I started heading south through Tooele, turned onto the Pony Express. How far down the Pony Express did you go? Not very far. <laughs> Maybe 20 miles, I don't know. So what did you do once you got there? Um, hooked up a heater and had a fire for the boys. Josh said they drove to Simpson Springs and had s'mores over a campfire. It's not really very clear exactly what happened that evening and the next morning. We asked him if we could search his minivan, and he agreed. The minivan was full of camping supplies, like there was a tarp, a generator, a shovel, graham crackers. During that search of the minivan, where they find Susan's phone hidden in the center console, it's this pink cell phone, clearly not Josh's. And he was kind of like deer in headlights. He just kind of looked at us. In no way did it make any sense. Susan's cell phone is in the van with him. Where the heck was Susan? Detectives talked to Josh and Susan's son, Charlie. There was one particular statement that raised a lot of eyebrows. Who were you camping with? Uh, my dad and my mom. And my, my little brother. Dad, your mom, and your brother. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.